Hi everyone, welcome back. This week I want to talk a little bit about a couple of things that I said in an earlier video was signature style. I was really enforcing the importance of having your own unique style and also uh, a cohesive body of work. And I wanted to take some time to kind of unpack that a little bit and give you a bit more of a description and what I was meaning when I was saying it. I hope that you enjoy this video and that you get some things out of it that are gonna be beneficial to your future or already art career. Signature style. Why do I keep enforcing a signature style? Why do I feel like that's important information that I want to share with all of you? I think because a signature style is really your artistic voice. It's your it's your way of communicating with the world. And so every time you create a piece of work and you post it out on Instagram or onto your website or pass it on to a gallery for sale, you are saying something. It's a reflection of you and it's also your brand. And so the last thing you want is to be putting out somebody else's brand because all you're doing is really advertising the artist that created the work in the first place. And so, it can be really kind of overwhelming when you're trying to come up with a style that's unique to you. And so I wanted to just break that down a little bit and maybe give you some advice on how you can come up with your own signature style. So one of the ways that for me, when I started in the beginning and how I developed my own style is that I really took the time to play around and paint as much as I possibly could. I wasn't really paying attention to like how my brush strokes were or what my colors were uh, and composition more or less, but I was understanding how to apply paint onto the canvas and I learned about different techniques like wet on wet or scumbling and using different mediums and, and how to apply them to get different creative looks that were different and unique. And through all of that experimentation, there were a few pieces that when I stood back, I was like, wow, okay, that's really cool. I really, really like that. And I found like there was an internal excitement and that's what I paid attention to is what caused me to have internal excitement where I thought, oh yeah, okay, this is good, this is good. Those are the ones that I paid attention to. And I kept that feeling by trying to work on other pieces that created the same type of feeling. And through my experimenting and using different tools, different types of mediums, different types of acrylics, different types of sub traits, all of that. And then I started to kind of narrow my focus down, started to pay attention to things that came more easily to me. I think that's a key thing that we need to, to really pay attention to. Uh, drawing was something that I like to do, but I don't think it, came easily to me. I really had to work on that. I also think that something that held my attention <laughs> for longer than a minute was also an important factor in deciding what style and how I wanted to paint. And with all of that information, you have to pay attention to certain segments of your life, right? But that's what, um, why gratitude journals are so important or journaling is so important so that when you go back and you reflect on certain things that have transpired in the past, you can see pivotal themes that are going to start to come out. And it's really the same when you are deciding to um, work on a body of work or trying to get your signature style is pay attention to what came easily for you and also what gave you like an internal feeling of excitement. When I honed in on those factors, I kept doing that same style of work or same body of work or painted the same way. I guess that's maybe a different way of putting it is I, I used those tools to continue building on that, increasing my knowledge, increasing my ability to create better and better work. Once I thought that my skill level in that niche had gotten to the level where I was feeling like okay, you know, there's something here, I'm creating something that's interesting. That's when I decided to expand that body of work, that I was able to develop 
my style, develop my signature, develop how I painted. And there was a consistency to how I would use my, my paintbrush, my paints, how I mixed my colors. That just came naturally through practice when I was starting to expand bodies of work into series. I think it's important for you to note that um, when I say a series of paintings, there really is no number on how many paintings you can have in a series. There are plenty of artists out there who have developed a, a beautiful style of work and can manipulate it and distort it and expand it to an infinite amount of different types of paintings that are all in the same series and body of work. And that's amazing for those artists that they found a niche that works for their clients, their galleries, and for themselves. There are also other artists that every so often they'll do um, maybe a series of 10 or 20 or 30 or even 50 paintings and they will explore a theme or an idea until it's done, until they just can't be bothered to make another piece or that they have said everything they wanted to say within that certain series of work. So when I say work in a body of work or work in a cohesive body of work, I don't mean that you can never work on anything else again or that if you draw landscapes, you can never do abstracts. That is entirely not what I'm saying. But I think when you are first starting out, it's important to remember a couple of things. Artists are creative beings by nature. We are intuitive, we are curious creatures, and we love to try new things. I have learned from myself, I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but there are certain things that I'm just not allowed to touch. And that's because I tend to hyper-focus on things and I get really excited when something grabs my attention and then I want to learn everything about it. How do we, how do we make that? How can we make it better? How, like, what can I do with this? Where can I buy it? I'll give you an example. In 2017, I took a, a year sabbatical from my day job. This was before I was a, a full-time artist. And I saw a painting that was created using cold wax and oil. Well, I'm not an oil painter and I had no clue what cold wax was, but I was so intrigued by the texture in this painting. She's a landscape artist. I'm an abstract artist. I will never do trees, but there was an element of the texture in her body of work that just really blew me away and I absolutely loved it. Well, I had no desires on becoming a landscape artist, but I wanted to understand that medium. I wanted to explore it, not even see. So that day I went out and I bought, I dropped like a couple of grand on art supplies because I was so interested in, in making work in my style using that medium. And it was so much fun, but it's, it's a distraction from my day-to-day -day work. It really can play with you, for me anyway. And so there's certain things I'm not allowed to do. Like I have a couple of friends who are tattoo artists and they wanted me to come by the shop and just practice to see if I can transfer some of my skills, like, you know, practicing on oranges or whatever, uh, grapefruits. And I was like, nope, can't do it, cannot do it. Because I know that I dive in, I dive deep. It gets me off my game and it it's messes with my, my focus. Because so. we are creative creatures by nature, the thought of being put into like a metaphorical box is really like not a good feeling for a lot of us. But I, I don't mean that you have to stay there forever. And I don't mean that you need to reproduce replications of your work for the rest of your life. That's not what I meant when I said your signature style or a cohesive body of work. There is a reason why we should niche ourselves down into a certain type of work, especially at the beginning. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't play, just like how I said earlier, you can play and you can try other things, but you really have to know your personality. And for me, I'm not allowed to do, I, I need to just stay focused on what my medium is and work within that. Being an artist takes discipline, dedication, consistency, and hard work. There really is no difference from being an artist 
in any other type of career. So if you were a day trader, that's what your focus is. You're reading about stocks, you're learning about stocks, you're constantly reading the paper, you're constantly looking up information. You are staying on top of your game so that you have as much knowledge as you possibly can about what to invest in and what not to. Uh, you cannot be a good stock trader if you don't dive in and focus on that. Now, if you were into stocks and then you were into real estate and you were buying and selling houses or flipping houses, that is just spreading yourself out way too thin. That's why I think it's so important to niche down in the beginning and really honestly hone in on what is natural to you first and become an expert with it before you decide to dabble with some other things. It's like rain in that artistic creativity. Put yourself in a box just for a little bit. Another reason to do that also is to establish your brand. We don't like to really think of ourselves as a brand, but our art really is our branding. It's a way to recognize who you, <laughs> it's a way to recognize you as an artist by just simply looking at your work. And you get there by understanding your brush strokes and being able to manipulate the paints in a certain style and way. And I bet you at some point, if I decided to transfer over to landscapes, I would take my, my knowledge of what I learned about layering and abstract, as well as texture, that I would be able to apply that to landscapes going Again, down. I'm gonna break that up to when I'm saying Branding, that does not mean that your work is like exactly the same and copies of your work. This is my interpretation of what that means. That you should be expanding and exploring your medium and, e and evolving. And so as you start to learn how to use your uh, acrylic paints, I'm gonna talk just about acrylic and abstract painting because that is what I'm working on and that's my niche. So it's easier for me to talk about that, but you can relate that to anything that you're doing, watercolor, oil. So when you learn your craft and have explored your medium to the fullest and that you understand how it works and you have a certain body of work or that you have created something that's unique to you that is recognizable, you can choose to stay in that pocket or you can choose to continue to evolve. And, and I think that's where people get confused on. There are two different avenues. There's always two or three or four different ways of doing something. I don't mean that when you come up with that one great style that I am telling you that that's where you need to stay. What I'm saying to you is come up with your brand that explores your signature style so that it's recognizable. I'm suggesting that you should keep evolving as an artist. I think that's important when it comes to galleries taking an interest in you. And there are a whole bunch of different types of galleries. So I can't, I can't talk about them all. I'm just gonna talk about a few of them. There's a reason why they want a cohesive body of work. There is a reason. They want something that's marketable. Galleries, like, they love art. That's why they're in the business. But they're also in the business because they want to make money. And so they don't want a portfolio of, I call them one hit wonders. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, is the only way that I can come up with that. And it, and yes, that refers to like the songs in the eighties or the nineties or whenever, whatever time period it was that a band got together and they, they really only had one hit, but it's a great song, <laughs> but they were never able to get back at that top again. And so when you have, uh, when you really have come up with a great concept and it's a beautiful piece, a gallery wants to know that you can, you can create that, manipulate it, and turn it into four or five or 10 or 20 pieces because it's sellable. And so that's why galleries want to be able to see that you have that ability to take one image and transform it into a multitude of different, unique, beautiful paintings that have your signature style in them. So I really hope that that kind of that opens the door a little bit about how you can think about your own style of work, the importance of working in a series and having a cohesiveness to your work that signifies your brand. 
Um, and as always, everyone, if you love this video or even like this video, give me a thumbs up and comments down below, and I will see you all next week.